guys, it's Charlie. So in today's video, we are going over all the basics about Avalanche AVAX, which as you guys have probably heard, is one of the hottest uh, crypto coins right now. So if you are thinking about investing, this video is going to really break down this coin, its network, as well as how they tie into the entire DeFi universe. I personally think this is a very promising project. But yeah, before you invest, it's always important to understand the basics about any coin, any project. So yeah, by the end of this video, my whole goal is to give you all the information you need about Avalanche. Let's get started. So this screen shows what we are going to cover in this beginner's guide, and I'm not gonna go through all of them right now, but if you want, you can pause the screen and take a look. So the biggest question right now in the market is uh, which blockchain is going to be able to solve Ethereum's problems for high gas fees and slow transaction speeds. So among other great competitors, right? Avalanche is an excellent candidate with a network that can actually develop decentralized applications and its own blockchains. The blockchains within the Avalanche network allow for the fastest smart contracts in the blockchain industry measured by time to finality which means the time it takes to confirm a transaction and not only is avalanche the fastest but it also has the highest number of validators showing future potential to be among the top 10 blockchains used in the cryptocurrency market so this is avalanche's current website avax.network uh, i'm not going to go through the entire thing but if you guys do want to skim through uh, this website basically show you guys what they're working on right now any current news uh, You can learn about the developers the people that are making this project and yeah I'm not gonna spend too much time on this But yeah, this is their uh, website that you can check out and if we take a look at coin market cap uh, We can see that right now they are ranked number 10 based on total uh, market cap So I'm gonna click on this you can see that the current price is about $100 per coin right now in the last 24 hours Super volatile, but uh, the low was $79.65. So we did see a pretty big correction recently. Uh, and the high was $105.27. So right now the uh, total market cap is $24 billion. We have a trading volume of about $2.4 billion within the last 24 hours. So this has gone up pretty significantly, 162% in the last 24 hours. Uh, and if we come down here, we can see the one day price chart. <laughs> we see this huge jump right here. Uh, let's zoom out to the one month and you can see that it actually hit about $140 per coin back in November. Uh, since then, it's really dropped in price with a big recovery recently. And if we zoom out to the one year, you can see that Avalanche has just absolutely crushed it. Um, they actually did hit about $50 per coin back at the start of this year. They saw a big correction. And then uh, in the last few months, you know, it's just really, really skyrocketed. So market dominance is 1.09%. Uh, like I said, they have a market rank of number 10. So let's actually take a look at some of the ratings we have. Um, right now you can see that the symmetry score is a B grade and you can see that the token insight rating is a B. So now let's briefly go over the history of consensus, right? In the 1970s, computer scientists began thinking about how to achieve agreement between a set of machines. And this question paved the way to the many protocols that would be made to try and solve the complex problem known as consensus. These protocols achieved agreement through a procedure similar to that of voting in politics with a bill being the transaction issued and the centers of each state being the validators who vote on whether they accept or reject that transaction. So for many decades, right, only one family of consensus protocols was known, the classical consensus protocols. Protocols that belong to this family were all to all voting, meaning that every node uh, voted on whether to accept or reject a transaction. This probability of one allowed for decisions to be made with speed, certainty and efficiency. The downsides of the system, however, uh, was that it required a secure node membership base. Uh, it could be easily hacked and that it was not scalable due to the limited number of validators in a network. Then came the Nakamoto consensus protocol with its own set of pros and cons, right? So this was developed by Satoshi uh, Nakamoto, who was the creator of Bitcoin. The Nakamoto consensus protocol sacrificed absolute certainty in order to improve scalability allowing for minimal error in the blockchain that decreased over time as more blocks were added. So this basically uh, resulted in the protocol being scalable at the cost of being slow and efficient. Now let's talk about the Avalanche consensus model. Many versions of protocols were made featuring various optimizations of both classical and Nakamoto consensus protocols. However, in 2018, uh, the Avalanche protocol became the first member of a newly introduced consensus protocol called the Snow family. 
So let's talk about how the avalanche consensus works. Basically, how does this new consensus uh, work to make agreements? Well, it works through random subsampled voting and network gossip. So this method of consensus uh, developed from an algorithm where random volunteers were asked to make a decision repeatedly until more and more volunteers had the same preference. So basically to simplify, imagine if a room of people were trying to agree on like pizza or sandwiches for lunch, uh, and the ultimate goal was to achieve consensus, right? Using the snowball algorithm, everyone would ask a random subset of people in the room for their preference. And if more than half of the people said pizza, uh, that person would adopt pizza as their preference. And then similarly, if more than half of the people said sandwiches, then that person would adopt that as their preference, right? So everyone would repeat this process until they reach one option that everyone prefers resulting in a consensus. So here we can see that when a transaction is made, validators receive and either accept the transaction or reject it. Validators that accept it are added to the list of valid transactions where the snowball algorithm begins random subsampling and a random subset of validators are selected and asked while being updated on their preferences until the threshold is met. And then once the preference threshold is met, any transactions that conflict with the accepted transaction are rejected and the consensus is made. I know pretty um, complex, but it is a very, very interesting uh, way how it works. So let's talk about some of the uh, advantages, right? So using the Avalanche Consensus Protocol basically allows for the fastest agreements in the market that can scale and they're also energy efficient. So for a protocol that does not require a special computer hardware, it performs well when needed in adverse conditions and it's also resilient to 51% attacks, which is basically when a single person or a group of people gain control of over 50% of a blockchain's computing power. And overall, uh, Avalanche proves to be the fastest compared to the largest coins on the market, uh, along with the recent competitors of Avalanche. So Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, do about 7 to 14 transactions per second, with Ethereum beating Bitcoin's one hour finality by 54 minutes. And even when we compare Avalanche to its uh, competitor and uh, most promising blockchain, which is Polkadot, you can see that Polkadot only rates at 1,500 transactions per second, uh, and a 60 second finality, right? And Avalanche is the clear winner by bringing in 4,500 transactions per second with a three second finality. So this is not only due to its thousands of nodes in the validation process, but also because of their CPU efficient protocol. So let's take a look at another one of Avalanche's competitors, Cosmos, uh, also known as Atom. And despite their tendermint consensus getting up to 1,000 transactions per second and six seconds for finality, they end up sacrificing more scalability because of their bandwidth limits, right? So this bandwidth is an issue because it limits them to 200 nodes before they start losing transaction speeds. And uh, although Avalanche is a newer blockchain that still has yet to be adopted by many projects, it shouldn't take long before more organizations see their promising consensus protocol and start building on Avalanche. Now, we want to dive deeper into Avalanche's network, and to do that, we need to understand the Snowman Protocol. The Snowman Protocol is a linear version of Avalanche uh, fitting the needs of the Ethereum virtual machine and able to compute almost anything given enough resources. Avalanche powers the Snowman Protocol and implements it into their platform chain and contract chain. So this allows them to have a chain optimized consensus protocol that gives them absolute ordering. Uh, this is also so that each blockchain is capable of doing separate tasks on the same network without interfering with each other. And then going deeper into Avalanche's network, we have an ecosystem comprised of a primary network and three built-in blockchains that allow Avalanche to further expand inside their own digital world. So let's talk about the network infrastructure, right? So Avalanche's network contains the primary network which secures and validates the three built-in blockchains. Uh, those separate built-in blockchains are the X-chain, which is the exchange chain. Uh, we have the P-chain, which is 
uh, the platform chain and the C chain being the contract chain. And yeah, we will dive deeper into what these three separate blockchains do in a bit. So with this image, you guys, uh, you can see that the primary network validates out to the three branches of blockchains that can significantly expand within its own network. So these blockchains on Avalanche create the ability to perform actions like exchanging and staking on their network that you would normally not be able to perform unless you went to separate uh, decentralized applications, right? So let's take a closer look at each of these blockchains and what they are capable of. First is the X chain, right? So this is the exchange chain, like I said before, and this is where they can be traded based on a DAG, or AKA a uh, directed acyclic graph. The X chain operates through partial ordering of decisions, a method of storing data that differs from the linear approach of both Bitcoin and Ethereum. So this allows every transaction in Avalanche's network to belong to its own set where they can use the Avalanche consensus protocol to process the fastest transactions in the market. Now on the P chain, this is the platform chain like I said before, uh, you can stake your AVAX tokens by validating and helping secure the primary network. Uh, staking is the process of locking up tokens to support a network while receiving a reward uh, in return, right? So this can include monetary compensation, uh, it can include increased network utility, uh, and using the Snowman consensus protocol, the P chain is also capable of managing and keeping track of active subnets and the creation of new subnets. And then uh, finally, we have the C chain, uh, and the AVAX C chain is the smart contract blockchain on Avalanche, which enables the creation of Ethereum compatible smart contracts. So the C chain is capable of interfacing with decentralized applications and paying gas fees that would otherwise be expensive on the Ethereum blockchain, which you know is a problem that Avalanche is looking to solve along with other blockchains. This basically opens the door to many decentralized applications that can connect to the Avalanche blockchain. So now what are subnets, right? So a subnet or a subnetwork uh, is a set of validators working together to achieve agreements on the state of a set of blockchains. So each blockchain is validated by a subnet and a subnet can validate many blockchains. And then inside of these blockchains, there can be different consensus models and virtual machines agreeing and solving uh, through all these kinds of methods, right? Now, when it comes to governments, businesses, and corporations looking to use blockchain technology, they can add sub-networks to Avalanche's ecosystem. So now let's go over some of the uh, uses of Avalanche, and there are many of them. The two main use cases for Avalanche are the creation of decentralized applications and custom blockchains through sub-networks. So each of these two creations are extremely broad, I know, but they open the door for so many opportunities in the future. Opportunities like transferring uh, and using multiple blockchains at once, uh, voting power from decentralized apps that create incentives for Avalanche's blockchain, and yeah, the possibilities are endless. So along with the other rising blockchains, AVAX coins can actually be used as a governance on the platform, meaning that the coins you have in stake can be used to vote on proposed changes in the network, right? So that's really interesting. Uh, and with a max cap of 720 million coins, Avalanche's deflationary token reinforces scarcity and boosts the value of coins, making the price uh, rise even further. Now let's talk about Trader Joe. Trader Joe is the native uh, DEX or decentralized crypto exchange for Avalanche. Uh, and it's basically a one-stop shop for trading, exchanging, and staking many tokens uh, along with the AVAX coin. So at the start of this video, I sort of went over the price movement uh, for Avalanche. Uh, and basically, you can see that you know Avalanche really, really went up in price. And let's talk about the reasons why, right? So first of all, AVAX gave away $180 million earlier this year in order to incentivize people to participate in their program. Their main goal was to bring two major players into its platform, uh, and those were Curve Finance and AAVE. Uh, and this was a success as prices rose from around $12 to $55 in the span of a few weeks. Uh, and then news of Avalanche's many advancements in the decentralized finance space will definitely cause prices to rise even further. That's my opinion. Don't know if that's for sure gonna be true, but uh, I have pretty high confidence in that. So right now, their network continues to push out new ecosystem projects and upgrades to their platform, uh, which result in many people around the world talking about the potential of Avalanche, right? The hype is pretty real right now. 
Uh, and many are starting to see that the Avalanche blockchain has a lot to offer, which has you know, caused the price to rise from $4 all the way up to about $100 per coin right now. And yeah, that literally took only one year. So pretty crazy growth. So now let's talk about some of the recent news and updates that have surfaced online uh, about Avalanche's ever-expanding network. So recently, Cook Finance uh, launched an index platform on Avalanche, uh, providing an easy way for new users to get into decentralized finance indexes without having to deal with the expensive gas fees on Ethereum. Then we also had news uh, of Avalanche raising $18.5 million in seed funding, making the way for new blockchain projects on their network, and also giving lots of hope to the recently increased demand on Avalanche's ecosystem. And then news articles on cryptocurrencies quickly flocked to Avalanche's rising popularity as it became the 10th most valuable cryptocurrency in the world. And this sparked tons of attention towards its potential to challenge and even overtake Ethereum's market dominance. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to buy Avalanche on Coinbase. Uh, it's very simple. You guys probably already know how to do it, but I'll just take you guys through and show you uh, what it looks like on Coinbase's platform. And if you guys do wanna get some free uh, Bitcoin, uh, I will put my link down in the description below. You guys can use that link and you will get uh, free Bitcoin just for signing up. So I'm on Avalanche's page right now. You can see that the price is just under hundred bucks. If I scroll down here, you can see that I have about $3,400 of Avalanche right now in my portfolio. Um, I actually have some more in another portfolio, but I have $3,400 right here. But yeah, if you do wanna buy it, you can click trade right here. And it's gonna say uh, you can buy AVAX with cash. You can sell AVAX for cash if you have some already or you can convert AVAX to another crypto. So if you do wanna buy AVAX, I'm gonna click on this one right here. From here, you're gonna be able to actually set the amount that you want to buy. So let's say you want to buy um, $500 of Avalanche right now. Um, so you're gonna enter in 500 bucks. Uh, and you can actually press this and it's gonna say that's actually about 4.9 uh, AVAX tokens. But I'll go back to $500. And then you're going to um, click preview buy. Oh, and by the way, uh, this is going to be your bank account that's uh, set up with Coinbase. So you will have to do that. Uh, so I'll click preview buy again. And you can see the current buy price is $100.12. Uh, we're going to be paying using my Bank of America card. Uh, we're going to buy $492.66. Uh, and that's including that $7.34 Coinbase fee for a total of $500. And after that, we're going to click here and buy now. After that, it's gonna say successfully purchased and you can uh, click on show details if you want. And yeah, after that, you are done. You can just click done and you have bought Avalanche. Um, as always with crypto, make sure to do your own research, do your own due diligence. Um, now, just watching this video is probably not gonna be enough for you. This gave you an overview of what Avalanche is, but there's still so much stuff that you can learn about this platform. I'm not a financial advisor. I just like crypto and I like talking about crypto on my channel, so if you guys did enjoy the video if you did find it helpful make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe for more videos just like this i make a ton of content about personal finance uh, investing and entrepreneurship so yeah thanks again and i'll see you in the next video